do it. Good. So um, five reasons you should not break out of a loop. Um, you might have a very good reason to doing exactly that. So it, I'm not saying that you should never break out of the loop, but I'm just consider these reasons. Chapter one, it's a blatant lie. When you say you're going to loop forever and you don't do it, you're lying. So um, that's maybe not that uh, bad good a reason, but you can say uh, it's an idiom. I think it's an idiom because we, 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 we program for the computer. The computer doesn't care, but people do. So if you program to the people, you wouldn't tell lies. Chapter two, how do I get here out of here? So when you're breaking out of a loop, you maybe you, you break out the normal way. Maybe you, you exit the normal way. Maybe you break out. So you have to start mapping all the exit points here. Um, and it's not always a break statement. It can be a return statement. It can be a, 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 an exception that is raised. It could be a call to a function that raises an exception. So a lot of extra work if you're reviewing code where, there is, uh, where you're not completing the loop when you're breaking out of it. So um, chapter three, um, say I've already mapped all the ways you can exit the loop. Now it's, I get a completely new structure that I'm not used to. And, and conditional, uh, a, 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 um, a normal loop is something that I know about. I know how it works, how it functions. If you put some break statements in there, some return statements, it becomes something that is completely new and I have to familiarize it myself with it. So stick to the plain old regular loops. It will make it easier for the people who have to read your code. Chapter four, fragile. There's a loop invariant inside. I don't know how many of you have heard about loop invariants. When I talk to people and I ask them, have you ever heard about loop invariants? I said, yeah, yeah. I've Maybe in college they heard about it, but it's not something that you use in everyday programming. You might think it's only used for people who in academia that are writing these papers and uh, those who are writing very um, mission critical code. But I actually use it in everyday programming. So I've given a small example here, a Fib, Fibonacci function. So, um, a for loop, it exits at the bottom, unlike a while loop, which exits at the top. So it's written here a loop invariant that says what, what, what's the relationship between A, B, and I in this, uh, in this function at the bottom of the loop. And it's not hard to verify that A is equal to fib of I plus one and B is equal to fib of I plus two. So that same loop invariant holds when you exit the loop, right after you exit the loop. But you know one more thing, and that is i equals the last value in the range, which is n minus 2. So put that together, and you know that i equals n minus 2. So i plus 2 is equal to n. And so b equals to fib of n, and it's fib of n that we want, so we should be returning b. A very simple reasoning that you can do mentally in your head. And uh, however, if you add a break statement in a loop, you can't do that. Everything is messed up. Um, can, tr uh, can try the, uh, where was I? You can verify that it works. Um, chapter five, there must be a better way. Um, if you search on YouTube for Raymond Hettinger, there must be a better way. You'll find some wonderful videos where he talks about Python. I really recommend them. And he, when he talks, he, when he taps on the desk, the audience is supposed to ask or say, but there must be a better way. So I'm gonna go through a, a few examples where typically you break out of a loop. First example, you're doing a search. And um, as soon as you find an element that satisfy the conditions, you break out of the loop. 
Um, that's one way of doing it. The other way is to use Python's built-in next uh, function. It's much shorter, more declarative. You know exactly what you're doing here. Um, sometimes, especially during testing, you want to verify that some iterable contains an element that satisfies a condition. Same thing here, you might loop around and then as soon as you find one element that satisfies your condition, you can break out. You don't need to go any further. And then you return true if you find that element, you return false if you haven't found that any ele such element. So we can try this. Is there an element that is um, divisible by seven? No. You can do that with one line using the any expression in Python, which is much more succinct, and you get the same answer. No loops, just a simple expression. And then you can do the same thing with the dual of any, which is all. Um, you want to verify that all elements in, a, in an iterable satisfies a condition. Are all elements in this list less than 10? Yes, they are. You can do that with using Python's all. Then <clears throat> here I've been using that, uh, the fact that I have iterables and I have an iterator. You don't always have that. Created a small class here, a data class called tree node. It's, uh, you can build nice trees with it. It has the root and some children, and I've, I've declared as frozen because I favor immutability. And I've chosen children to be a tuple rather than a list because I favor immutability. I can um, create a random tree. And then <clears throat> now I can search, for instance, for the first uh, word in this tree in a breadth first search that begins with a vowel. I think in this case, it will be above. And when you do a breadth first, you go, the way that tree is drawn here on the side, you would go from left to, to right, from top to bottom. So again, you will, if you remember from when you prepared for the coding interview last time, how you do a breadth first uh, search, you use a queue. You put the root on the queue, and then each time you pop an element off the queue, you put all the children on the queue, and you continue like that until the queue is empty. So we do that, and but as soon as we find a uh, a, uh, a node that uh, satisfies the conditions, we can return that. If we exit, if we get through the whole loop, we return none. And uh, the first word here was above this one. So how would you do that without uh, breaking out of the loop? I would write an iterator. Um, the lines of code is almost the same as for the search, except that I have replaced the two lines here with a single line, which is a yield statement. The, uh, the so-called cyclomatic complexity has gone down because I have one less if statement. So it's better, and I'm really separating the, um, the traversal of the tree from the actual thing that I'm doing with that traversal. To do a breadth first search, I can again use uh, Python built in next, and I get the same result as above. I can then reuse this iterate for other things uh, using uh, Python's uh, other built-in uh, functions like any and sum to find out how many nodes are in this tree. Last example. Um, sometimes you want to read the binary file and you want to read it in chunks of a certain size. Here the chunk size is uh, 4K. So you loop and you read a chunk at a time. As soon as you get an empty chunk, you know you're done and you can break out. Otherwise you process each chunk. Um, in this case, I just print the length of the chunk, but normally you would maybe send that chunk over the network or do something with it. 
encrypted, I don't know what. So here you can use Python's built-in iter function. Normally iter takes an iterable and returns an iterator for that iterable. But there's an overloaded definition of the iter function that takes two arguments. One is a function that takes no arguments and then the other is a sentinel value. So in this case, I have a function that reads a chunk and the sentinel value is a uh, empty byte string. And so this function, this lambda is gonna be called repeatedly. As soon as it uh, returns an empty chunk, it will throw a uh, stop iteration and you will exit the loop. Three lines instead of six. More succinct, no, you're not breaking out of the loop. I can uh, run this and I can run this, same, same results. So to conclude, if you see a loop and you see that you're, you're breaking out of the loop, it should evoke a smell, a code smell. And you should ask yourself, is there a better way? If you get rid of the smell, you might very well end up with code that's more readable, more succinct, functional, declarative, and who knows, maybe more Pythonic. So that's it. Thanks. Uh, if we, if anybody has a question, we probably have time for like two or three questions. I have a quick question. Um, I, uh, first of all, I, I, I think I agree with everything you said. Um, so don't take it the wrong way, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are on the, uh, the else clause of the for loop. Oh yeah. It's not only on the for, it's also on the while loop. I, you know, because I always try not to break out of loops, I haven't found much use for it. Um, I, uh, I have tried to see if it makes any sense in some cases and uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't use it much. Um, it's not on the top of my, uh, my things in Python. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I wrote an else clause in a for loop recently and uh, a coworker was like, what does this even mean? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm just going to write this another way because this is just like, even though it's clearly that, that's the in, from a language point of view, it's idiomatic, but from a, you know, an actual like, you know, Python reader or writer, it's, it's so obscure as to not be usable. I had exactly the same experience when I wrote a uh, try with an else clause. Same thing there. Coworker said, what is this? What does it mean? And, uh, <laughs> um, I did hear that you mentioned Raymond in, in regards to else clauses and in, in for and while loops. Um, he uh, said that uh, it goes back to the go to wars, uh, because before the while and uh, before the while construct was created, there was an if, if then clause and then a go to to, and that was how you looped. Um, and so there was if, and then the else would have been as if you get to the end of the, the, the iterating condition and you didn't break out. But yeah, in today's, uh, in today's day and age where you don't have go-tos to deal with, um, it's not one of those things that kind of parses naturally. I still see them once in a while, but uh, I, I have to consciously remind myself that this is a condition that I'm only going to get to if I finish the loop and there is no break. Yeah. Every single time I've ever used an else clause on a for loop, I have a comment in there from my coworkers, which means I should probably not use this. <laughs> <clears throat> Or you have to educate your coworkers, which is... I was going to say that, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of my opinion when people say don't do this. Don't do this Pythonic thing because people who don't really understand Python very well won't understand it. Well, you know, I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> Sometimes I, mean, I have that comment for myself. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but I mean, it's like, it's like, come on, people. It's not it's not that hard to learn 
you know, just because it's something new, you don't want to see it ever again. I mean, really? Anyway. Yeah, and, and I guess it would yeah. have to depend on the size of the team that you're working on. It's a lot easier to uh, have a quick meeting to discuss a piece of code with three or four people than it is on a team of, you know, 40 or 50. Yeah, that's true. But you usually don't have all 40 or 50 reviewing the code either. Right. I mean, right. when I think it's definitely a fine line because, like, I, yeah. I found that the the length of the explanatory comment for the weird code that I just wrote is uh, directly proportional to the likelihood that I probably ought to rewrite it later. <laughs> well, there there is always that possibility, but uh, I, I I I object to I object to the concept of not doing something that is really cool in Python just because people who are not very well versed in Python won't understand it. That, that, that particular concept I don't agree with. I mean, I'm not saying that there are times where you really don't need to put an else after a for loop or whatever, but I'm just saying, I, I, don't, I object to that concept of just because somebody might not understand it, you shouldn't do it. Sure. Uh, the, the, I agree there's, there's, with Diane. Um, I think an example of that is, is next. The first time somebody sees next, they wonder, what is this? Yep. And it's very useful. Yep. I find teachers find it difficult to not find teaching moments 